Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Tom, and today we're checking out the solar system that we installed in this 2024 Brinkley Model Z 3400. This is a new floor plan from Brinkley, and the solar system that we've done in this one is a little bit different than we've done in the other Model Zs in the past. This one is different because we're actually gonna tie into the truck, the truck's onboard inverter, as in the 120 volt outlet that's near the tailgate, as opposed to doing a DC to DC charger, or a chassis charger is what it's sometimes referred to. And essentially, we're gonna be able to use that truck as a generator. It's different, let's check it out right now. This is pretty normal for a fifth wheel. The control panel is kind of right near the front door, and so we're able to put you know, our touchscreen display right here. Now, this is the Victron Touch 70. It is a seven inch touchscreen display and control all in one. And this is standard on all of our packages. Now this particular RV got our 1370 watt Brinkley Model Z package, but you know, if you have, it doesn't have to be the 3400. We've done lots of other Model Zs as well. We also have packages for the Brinkley Model Gs, even big dual inverter systems. This is a single inverter system. This is what I would say 98% of people really need. I've done, I've been doing this since 2017. I've got well over a hundred clients that have traveled all around North and South America with solar systems I built. And this is just one of my favorite features. And the most common feature that the clients actually see and use all the time is this nice display. So you can see it shows our power coming in, what's going out of the inverter or what's being powered on the AC load side. You can see we got the air conditioner running back there. We can see our battery percentage, the battery is full, what's going on with the battery. Our DC power is our 12 volt system, like our lights and stuff like that. So if I turn off lights, that will change. And of course that's the 12 volt fridge as well. And then this is where the solar production would show up. Now we don't have any solar coming in because we're underneath an awning here at the shop, but that is where it would show up typically when you're out in the sunshine. This system, you would probably run out of gray water, you know, tank space and fresh water before you run out of electricity. If you're following the weather and you're, you know, running the vent fans, and you're using the air conditioner modestly, you know, cause you're following more nicer temperate weather, then this will keep you off grid longer than your water will last you. So that's been my experience. I lived and traveled for over three years full time as well. Um, so that's speaking from just a, you know, both a professional level and all the clients I've had over the years and personal experience as well. Pretty cool. But I do want to mention that not only can you just, you know, control everything in here as well, but we can actually remote log in. So if you have a hotspot that you're connected to, you know, some type of internet or even Starlink, if you connect this to the internet, both you can control and monitor it remotely, even from your phone or a laptop or a tablet, but I can do the same as well. So let's say that this customer goes across the country, they're having, you know, some type of thing that they can't quite figure it out. I can actually remote log in and see what's going on and then give them actual data and give them answers and provide troubleshooting if needed. Anyways, I don't wanna go into that too much, but I just wanna mention that this is pretty much what you're gonna be seeing and using and monitoring essentially. And this is where we like to put it on the fifth wheels where the remaining, you know, the rest of the controls sort of go. I do wish that we could get it lower in here, but the way the screws come in from the side and the way the backing is on this and the stuff that's already here, it's just not quite possible to get it too much lower. So just it just is what it is sometimes, but we really try our best to, to get it in the best place that we can actually get it. So let's go ahead and jump up to the front bay area so I can show you the actual system. And then we'll, I'll show you the plug that goes into the truck and then I'll show you the solar on the roof as well. Now we're located in Winter Haven aka Central Florida, right on US Highway 17. So I apologize for the traffic noise in the background, but I wanted to show you this. This is pretty standard. Now you don't really have to do anything up here, but this is the normal components that come with our 1370 watt package. It's very similar to our 1700 watt Brinkley Model Z package and our 1000 watt package that we offer as well with some key differences. I kind of want to just go over some of the parts here real quick for you. We got a big charge controller. This 15085 is handling our 1000 watts of solar that we add on the roof. The 150 is handling the factory 370 watt panel. This would also handle if you had two of those 370 watt panels. And this is our solar disconnect switch so we can shut off the solar coming in from the roof for like storage purposes, winterizing the RV. 
This is our big battery switch to turn off all of the power if you need to work on it. We have our servo above that. The servo is the networking hub that connects to that touch screen on the inside. That's what allows us to remote monitor everything. And then this right here is mainly our power distribution. So this houses our fuses, and then it's also housing um, the battery monitor right here because this, this RV does need a battery monitor because we're using the SOK batteries. We are switching away from SOKs to Epochs because this has a seven year warranty. Those come with an 11 year warranty. And the main difference is the Epochs, besides the warranty, is the Epochs actually will directly communicate with the servo because the battery will directly talk to the servo. We'll get more accurate data, which is really, really cool. So if you look at the packages online, you'll notice that they're having different batteries. That's, that's only the real main difference. And then the main real big difference on this particular RV is we're using the Quattro 2. Now this is a Quattro 2, two times 120. Typically our packages come with a Multi Plus, either a regular Multi Plus or a Multi Plus 2, two times 120 for the 50 amp RVs. Now the only difference between a Quattro and a Multi Plus at this scale, the 12 3000s, are the fact that it has two AC inputs. So this is, allows us to have two different incoming power sources, whereas the Multi Plus only has one AC input. So on this one, we have our main AC input coming from our shore power. So when they plug into an RV part or anytime they use a shore power cord, that's just like normal. That's how the Multi Pluses are done. But on this Quattro 2, on the secondary AC input, we have a different wire coming in. We actually have a 10 gauge wire that we ran up to the like the pin or the hitch on the fifth wheel. And we have a little pigtail that will allow the customer to plug directly into their truck. So this will allow them to use their truck as a generator. Say so their batteries are low and they're doing a travel day, but they're moving between dry camping spots. That 15 amps at 120 volts coming from the truck is 1800 watts, AKA we can take full advantage of this 120 amp charger that's built into the Quattro. So this is a 120 amp charger. If we did DC to DC charging on the truck, let's just say that you wanna do something similar. You're gonna do an Orion XS 50 amp DC to DC charger, and you're gonna buy two of them to get 100 amps of charging off of your alternator. Well, those two Orion XSs are more expensive than the difference between the Quattro 2 and the Multi Plus 2. So you've already spent more money, all right? But you're only gonna get 100 amps of charging, whereas the Quattro 2 can do up to 120 amps of charging. You're feeding those two Orions with very large expensive wire that runs all the way up to your truck's alternator. You're basically, you're gonna make a pretty extensive modification to your truck. So in the end, what does that really mean? Well, it means that it is cheaper for the customer. They don't have to make modifications to the truck. We don't have to add extra wiring. We don't need all that additional labor to occur. We're adding one extra wire here. Yes, there is a little bit extra label or labor compared to the regular Multi Plus, but comparing to a DC to DC charger on a towable scenario, this is so much cooler. I love that they can run their truck and pull 15 amps off of the truck, and that will put 120 amps into their batteries. I mean, you, you can run this charger at full tilt right off of the truck. That's equivalent to running like a Honda 2000 generator, but it's your pickup truck, and you're already using it to tow the RV. That's also enough power to run like one large appliance without even draining your battery bank down, which is really, really cool. The other thing I wanna mention is, if you don't have an onboard inverter already, consider not doing DC to DC charging for your towable vehicle. In my experience, remember, I did live and travel for over three years full time, um, as well as all these years of professional installations. Um, but what I found from my customers and myself personally, because I started out with a towable, is that you typically drop your trailer somewhere and then you use the truck to drive around. And so your truck isn't connected to your trailer. So backing it up underneath there and plugging it in to use to, you know, to get your 30 amps or your 50 amps of charging on the DC to DC, or even if you doubled those up and you did 60 amps or hundred amps. Um, a lot of times by the time you figure up all that wiring, all the cost that's involved, the time it's going to take, you could buy yourself a Harbor Freight or a Honda 2000 generator for cheaper and you could just plug it into your shore power cord. So I just want to mention that 
not only is that, would that be a little bit cheaper if you don't have the truck with the onboard um, inverter, but you may not even use it that often because your truck isn't connected to the trailer. Um, but if you already have the newer truck with it and you are doing a hybrid inverter, you're considering the Multi Plus 2, I would say go ahead and do the Quattro 2 because when you are connected, you can use it while driving down the road. You can run, you can recharge your batteries while driving down the road and, or you could use your truck more like a generator. Um, and you can just use like a simple extension cord so you don't have to get so close. Typically, I don't even tell, you know, recommend that people that are using a larger towable like this even consider the DC to DC charging because of all the cost that is involved for the little amount of charging you get. Like I mentioned, you can do a small portable generator for cheaper, but if you're a smaller um, rig, then that's where the DC to DC really shines because you don't have the roof space and you're driving it all the time, like a smaller class C, a camper van, um, something like that. So anyways, got a little bit off topic, but I just wanted to mention that, you know, why we're going the Quattro 2 route and some benefits on why it might work for you and then some reasoning on maybe why you don't even want to consider the DC to DC charging um, you know, if your truck doesn't have the built-in inverter already. I would love to hear your feedback about using the truck as a generator. What do you think about using the Quattro 2? I think it's a fantastic idea. I wish I could take credit for thinking of it, but a customer was trying to take advantage of that plug in the truck and the light bulb just kind of went off for me because they wanted to use transfer switch and some other things. And I was like, oh no, we could just do a Quattro 2. The price difference isn't too crazy. It was better than trying to do a secondary transfer switch and all the other stuff we're gonna have to do. And it was cheaper than doing the chassis charging, like the DC to DC charging. Typically we, we were charging around 12 to $1,500 for the DC to DC because it takes us a full day to wire the truck all the way back. All the big wiring is very expensive. It's very labor intensive. And so this is much cheaper for the customers and they actually get better chart. Like they literally get more charging out of it. So I think it's a win-win, but I would love to hear your feedback. Now, if you have any other questions or concerns, please don't say something about, you know, this being a commercial. We are a small business. I do create this content. I'm filming it. I'm going to edit it. I do all the YouTube stuff. We build our own website. We do all of our own marketing. We do, we, we answer the phones. We're a small company. We do everything ourselves. So we don't have to outsource anything so that we can keep our prices very, very competitive. There are more expensive companies out there. We've had lots of people tell us that you know, they almost didn't go with us because we weren't the most expensive. And then we've had people that are on the opposite side that were a little too pricey for them. And we tried it, you know, what we do is we use quality components, we give great customer service, and we do an install the way that it should be done, you know, how we would do our own installs. Thank y'all so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time.